Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for everyone for coming to uh, this uh, post-banquet uh, first session. I know we're all a bit tired, but it'll be fine. Um, uh, <coughs> this is uh, very much, even though I'm the only one talking, this is very much a, 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 a work in progress, but also uh, teamwork. So if the, uh, our, my team is here, Dario and, and, uh, and Valentina. So if there are questions later, that I think we can take them all. Uh, this, is an, uh, this project is part of an ERC-funded uh, consolidator grant called Modern, Modeling Enlightenment, Reassembling Networks of Modernity Through Data-Driven Research. And it's based, this project fundamentally, uh, two, two core sort of axes, uh, which you can see in its title, one being modeling, uh, modeling as a, as an, a sort of iterative uh, way of thinking about uh, new approaches to literary history. Uh, we can think about how all the great works that uh, Willard McCartney, uh, for example, has published on modeling as a, as a sort of fundamental methodology or a shared methodology for the digital humanities, where computers are essentially modeling machines. And he, put, and, and, and he, and he juxtaposes that, uh, and not knowledge jukeboxes, which is a nice, uh, uh, a nice, uh, a nice image, uh, and that in fact we should use the, the force of these modeling to, to, to really push the boundaries of, uh, of thinking, uh, thinking about uh, data-driven research, data uh, literary history, and whatnot. And then, so the second, the second uh, subject, which is the subject today, is, is, is networks. So we're thinking about how can we model networks, how can we think about our particular uh, data and, and, and approach to the French 18th century, you'll see the, the, the corpora we use here uh, soon, uh, within this notion of, of a network, uh, and in particular social networks, and social network analysis, which comes, as you know, out of the social sciences, uh, but it's become more and more prevalent these days, uh, and so people like Ruth and Sebastian Anhart have done wonderful work uh, using social network analysis and uh, network graphs to model tutor uh, correspondence networks. Uh, this is part of a larger effort, and this is a great work that just came out a few years ago called The Network Turn thinking about how to use networks and these uh, particular approaches in the humanities uh, for, uh, uh, for attacking not only correspondence analysis, but you'll see other kinds of networks within, uh, within this so framework. So these are the two frameworks we're working on, uh, modeling as a, as, as a core methodology and then uh, thinking about the network. I'd also add, uh, just because I like Bruno Latour and uh, he was a lovely man, uh, but but this thinking about actor network theory, in particular the idea that, uh, that actor, actors in a network need not be human. Uh, they could be anything, and in fact uh, it's often non-human actants uh, that can be very influential uh, in certain, uh, certain networks. And so we take from Bruno and from, from actor network theory this idea that for us you'll see uh, it's not so much people, although the, the people will, will, will become involved, uh, but it's more text uh, and how text uh, circulate through uh, the 18th century world. So uh, we'll move to that. Uh, so if we talk about networks, there's a sort of the obligatory giant hairball, uh, <laughs> which is our network. Our network is a, it's a network of reuse and reception. <coughs> so it's based on text reuse, and I'll show you how, how we get there. This is just one uh, preliminary network, and I'll come back to, come back to it later. Uh, to get to the idea of reuse, uh, we're using a system that uh, we've developed for the past uh, 15 years at the University of Chicago, uh, where I did my PhD. It's called TextPair. It's a system that, uh, uh, that uses sequence alignment. It's sort of inspired by bioinformatics, by uh, DNA sequencing uh, algorithms. Uh, it's deceptively simple, but it works really well. It's fairly robust. It looks for sequences of, of n-grams, and, and we use, in particular, trigrams. Uh, in our particular model, you, these are the trigrams here. Uh, you filter out function words, and you flatten, and you lemmatize, and you do all those good things. It's, it's highly flexible. You can adjust different parameters, so it can skip over uh, lots of different words. So, of course, we're interested in, in, in not only noisy data, data that's uncorrected, but sometimes if we think about text reuse, uh, it's just interesting how something could be reused, not uh, exactly, but uh, perhaps in different ways. So you can just sort of see how that works. I won't get too much into that. We've presented the text pair here uh, at DH for, for, for a long time. It works really well. The corpora that we're using, we, we, we spent this first year really constructing these, th these corpora. We're trying to get as many as we can with the one caveat, the one proviso being we're not digitizing anything. So we just want already digitized things. The idea being that uh, for 20 years we've been digitizing things. Perhaps these uh, resources aren't sufficiently used or exploited, uh, and so how, how can we uh, federate already digitized collections to form these corpora so we have 
what we're calling Canon and archive. Today we'll talk about the Canon archive. The only distinction here is that in the Canon, the texts are uh, clean. So the texts are transcribed, <coughs> there's no OCR errors. In the archive, uh, which comes from different, uh, different where these are uh, OCR texts. So we'll try to get those together. And then to those two core uh, corpora, we have uh, four secondary corpora that we'll comp we'll, we're going to com compare these with. Uh, the uh, 18th century pamphlets from the Newberry Library in Chicago. Uh, Electronic Enlightenment has provided 60,000 letters, uh, so that's uh, uh, from the 18th century. Dictionaries, obviously, when thinking about text reuse, are, are an important, uh, important uh, subgenre because they are, in fact, text reuse machines. And then the, the BNF, the, the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, is working on giving us a collection of uh, 18th century press. Uh, and so, just to give you an idea of what this might look like, we're currently at 750 million words. I think in the in the in the proposal, I promised a billion, uh, so I have some, <laughs> if you have 250 million words floating around somewhere you'd like to lend me, uh, we'll take it, but uh, we're hoping to make that up with the press. Uh, so I don't know why, it just seems like a, a fun, wor uh, uh, seems like a good point to get there. Um, and we might get there. Just to give you an idea, just in this, the, the little corpus, the canon corpus, uh, we have 648 unique authors. Uh, this is a breakdown of, of male, female, 77.8%, it could seem low, but for, for the 18th century, it's quite high. Um, and so we, we, we've developed this little visualization engine to, to check on the, the general catalog at the, at the Bibliothèque Nationale. And during the 18th century, you can sort of see that, that the, the percentage of women authors never really gets above 3%. So we're, we, we feel fairly good about our, our breakdown at our, uh, in our corpus. And this just gives you an idea of, uh, of, uh, of the different authors. Voltaire is always an outlier, and we'll, we'll see why, but sort of everywhere, and there's, there's too much of it. But you can say that, the, you know, maybe our, we have a biased corpus because there's too much Voltaire, but, but, uh, but it's just everywhere. You can't actually get away from Voltaire, and so the, the Voltaire effect is, is actually real. In the catalog, he dominates everybody, and, and so, uh, so it's just a fact, uh, a fact of life. So we've aligned this corpus to itself. Uh, we, we, we compare the, the 3,000 documents uh, to each other, so it makes about 11 million comparisons. And we got 76,000 uh, shared passages, so sort of pair passages for, from this. Uh, and then we immediately sort of took this and, and put it into a network, uh, uh, a, a network framework just to see what, what was there. Uh, and in fact, here, the, the, the move towards the network really helped us uh, not so much understand the corpus, but understand what was wrong or what was going on or some, some different errors. And in, in this case, the, the list just made no sense to us. And we, we just sort of said, what's going on here? Why is there Corneille is the first? And so we, it, it, but it, it, it caused us to sort of think about, even within this highly curated corpora, corpus, there were lots of different things that were going on that was skewing the sort of results of our, <coughs> of our alignments. One was near duplicate documents. So not, not we, we tried to get rid of all the duplicates. We don't have, uh, but sometimes, you know, if there's a complete work uh, of Rousseau, there's a bit of text that's republished, it's put inside, it's sort of hidden, and so we, we try to find those. And then there was a great variability in, in just metadata. So whenever you're federating even these highly curated corpora, you have metadata that's all over the place, and so we had to sort of trap for that. We we're trying to use automatic methods as much as we can, but there's always a, a trade-off, so we're trying to, 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 to go between uh, domain expertise and automatic. So just, just thinking about, we just tried to do a sort of Levenstein and, and cosine similarity to, to, to think about things like the, uh, uh, the author. Can we find the same author? But in fact, this is, these are two separate authors. W the, the first one is like the nephew of the second one. Uh, and the, uh, for most of the time, most of these measures are, we'll just say it's pretty much the same thing. So it should be the same person, but in fact, they're not. So th we always have to have this sort of interaction between the automatic and the domain expertise. And then there's a huge problem in, in, in this idea of text reuse is that, is that paratext. And so text pair is great. It does exactly what we tell it to do. It finds these uh, shared passages with a great flexibility. These are all examples of sort of paratext that come back as, the, as, as reuses, but, but that aren't really reuses in, in our sense of the term. Uh, so we, we sort of call this noise. I mean, these are things that we have to try to filter out. Uh, and then this has been, uh, Valentina has worked on this method for using the BERT, the sequence classification model, uh, which is a multilingual uh, BERT model, a uh, large language model, to think about uh, building a classifier that can, that can uh, take the positive, what we call positive, uh, non-noisy uh, reuses and filter out the negative. And it's, it's worked fairly well. It's a training set. It's uh, like all these training sets, you have to keep sort of feeding it. 
uh, more and more with, with what we find, and you have to start from a place of we just have to know what keywords are in there. Uh, something like the privilege du roi, uh, these, these long texts at the beginning of a, of a French text that, uh, that aren't that interesting but are repeated everywhere. Um, and so we, and then of course there's always these outliers, there's always this gray area that b between when a reuse is not a reuse or is a reuse and it's hard to really say, so do, we, do you keep all the prayers? Um, the last example is just a sort of repeated uh, phrase. It's, it's interesting in itself, but is it, does it, does it, will it translate into the network is I think what, what we're trying to get. And so with this uh, <coughs> sort of semi, semi automatic approach, we were able to reduce greatly uh, the, uh, the number of passage pairs. So we only kept 19%. That meant we, had, we, we just had a lot of that, the different noisy things. Uh, and this was 439 unique authors with 9% women. So we were quite happy with that, with that breakdown. And that's how we formed this particular hairball uh, with Voltaire in the middle. And then it, w what we want to do with this is uh, the network is important, but again, the visualization of the network isn't that important to us. And in fact, the, just the idea of putting uh, the network uh, together, we want to think about how network measures and graph measures in particular can help us understand not so much this big circle because it's a, just a big circle with Voltaire in the middle, uh, <laughs> but more or less the different functions, the different ways of thinking about uh, how these uh, authors are related. So here's the question you always have to ask, so what, well, who cares? Uh, we, so we think about this in two ways. This could be a, a real support for traditional close reading methods, so a way of zooming from the big, uh, the big network into uh, different little texts. Uh, and we think that the database at the end will, will, will contain most or, or many uh, of the inter intertextual reuses in French 18th century. And then secondly, we'd like to sort of challenge, move forward and think about how uh, this network or these models can, uh, can sort of challenge the accepted wisdom of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the 18th century uh, literary history. And so very quickly, uh, the idea of what the author is in our database, and again, even though we're, we're sort of modeling accents that are real and not real, uh, text and that, for us, the, the author is just an attribute of a textual object. So it could be any other attribute, it's, it's, it's not that, uh, it's not that uh, thing. And there's different things that varies from different metadata where you get it. So for example, Voltaire is, uh, is place of birth and death is Paris, but that doesn't really tell you much because he didn't even, he didn't really work in Paris his entire life. Uh, Rousseau is classified as a, a playwright because he wrote one play. Uh, <laughs> so these are the inherited metadata that we have to think about. So we're sort of flattening this all out and just saying, well, it's just, it's just one thing. Um, and so for us, the texts are the main objects uh, of our database, the text reuses, and the main nodes of a network. The authors then is just, just becomes one attribute among others of text objects. Attributes of an uh, author object are then derived from the relations in the various text objects between them. So we're trying to think about that. Uh, uh, and this, the idea of, uh, of influence of how an author behaves in the network uh, as, a, as a node in the network uh, can think about influence. So how this, how, and you'll see how we, we sort of tried to uh, piece this together based on different network profiles. And then what a link is or what an edge is uh, is very important. So again, the, the whole filtering of the noise is important because when we, when we draw an edge, we want to be sure that it's a real text reuse, that it's not just repeated passage, that it's an actual literary uh, use. Uh, but this also means that you can't make assumptions about <laughs> the intentionality, if you will, of, of, of this link. So there's no way of, of saying uh, a read B and then quoted C, or, 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 or because you don't really know. There's always there could be a third term, a second uh, 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 text that's, that, that that predates it that goes around. So uh, uh, so our model is an abstraction, and it's a way of just thinking about uh, how the, the texts behave and how how the authors uh, may relate to each other. Uh, how much time do I have? Oh, good, plenty of time. Uh, so the fundamentals of our graph will say that it's a, it's a weighted network, um, which means that uh, edges are formed by a single reuse and then they can, they can accumulate. It's oriented, so uh, it's, it's directional. Uh, and the edge's direction uh, is according to chronology. So that's the way that we, th it's the way we try to handle time. Time, uh, temporal change is, is, a, is a known issue for networks. We're trying to deal with it with with, uh, with, uh, with the idea of, of chronology, but you'll see that sort of skews some of our results. Uh, 
And then several metrics such as peg drank attribute a greater importance to incoming links rather than outgoing uh, links uh, or edges. Uh, and so we're sort of, uh, since we're interested in the, in the reuse of text, we reverse the directionality of our network in a way that was a bit strange, uh, but, but works for us. Where, <laughs> whereas a reused text, uh, w instead of moving out from an author that gets reused later, uh, it moves back in, as in the text is reused later and then the arrow points back towards uh, the original author. This then uh, allowed us to think about the properties of nodes within the, given their relative position to each other, and using these different metrics of graph theory to define the characteristics of these nodes. Uh, and then to create analogies, this is what the, the challenge this year, between the profiles that we sort of generate and the literary uh, history of the time, uh, knowing that there's always a sort of anachronistic uh, view. So uh, certain metrics that you're probably familiar with, degree centrality, in degree centrality, out degree centrality, we're trying to make this uh, one sort of descriptive but also uh, meaningful for, for, for literary scholars. Uh, so this is just a, a way, so a, a, a node with a high uh, in and out degree gives us sort of this idea of an author's influence. So we have what we, what we call authorities, which have a high in degree, who are often reused. Uh, and then we have observers who have a high out degree. Uh, who are often uh, uh, who, who the ones that reuse the most, if you will. And these, are, these again, sort of skew to the chronology because obviously an authority <coughs> will be at the beginning of, uh, uh, we have a lot of the 17th century classics uh, are in our database, and you can see that they, obviously they, they're going to be the ones that are most reused, and they can't actually reuse others because there's not enough information. For them. And then people like Le Marquis de Sade is an observer, uh, but only because uh, nobody can cite the Marquis de Sade because he's published at the very end of the, uh, 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 of the corpus. So we have to keep that, keep that in, t in, in mind. And there's also different texts like, uh, <coughs> uh, like uh, Le Lycée de la Harpe, which is uh, a text about literary history, about, about literature, and it's based just on, uh, on all these uh, cited passages. So it's an, it's an intertextual text in and of itself, which gives it a, a higher weight within, <coughs> within the within the network. Then using between the centrality, which is the measure that uh, the sort of shortest route between different nodes, uh, we can think about what we call a mediator. So Fenelon is a good example of this. Fenelon uh, isn't used that much, isn't reused that much, but the reuses of, uh, that, he, uh, that he enacts uh, spread across the entire network. So he has a, he has a he's not just stuck in one corner. Uh, he, he'll cite the Bible. Uh, he'll cite uh, Voltaire, uh, and he is cited by Voltaire and, and others like that. So, uh, so it's a way of thinking of him as a mediator, as somebody that is important to the network uh, as a throughway uh, <coughs> from between us. And then, and then page rank centrality, which is, which is of course Google's big uh, measure for, for, for that they've used uh, for many years in their, in their search, uh, search algorithm. Uh, it depends on the, the quality of the link. So this is an important one for us because it means that all nodes aren't equal, that there is a certain idea that, uh, that if you're closer to a, uh, <coughs> to a really important node in the network, somehow that gives you a more, uh, a more, uh, a more prominent position within it. Uh, so in other words, if you're cited by Voltaire or if you're reused by Voltaire, that counts much more than being reused by 20 uh, so-called other people we don't know. Uh, so just to give you an idea of, of how the uh, page rank can sort of work, uh, you see Im it immediately we, we wanted to know how Corneille and Racine, which is a great 17th century classics, work. Corneille has a, uh, is reused less than Racine, but he has a much higher page rank, and that's because Voltaire, uh, again, the uh, Voltaire effect is there. Voltaire cites a lot, or reuses a lot of Corneille in one of his works, and it sort of ups his, his value. But, but if we just look at the betweenness Corneille exists, uh, he doesn't have a high between us, and so he's not a sort of media, and he exists just in a little, a little patch of the, uh, of the network. So Corneille is, is clearly an authority before a small community, whereas uh, Racine is an authority and also a mediator. Uh, so uh, again, you can see how by putting these profiles together, we can start to think of uh, these different combinations. So you can have an authority for a closed community, authority for the entire network, as in Racine and observers, again, uh, small, uh, observers for the entire wor uh, network, and then these mediators like Diderot, Rousseau, uh, through, through whom they, uh, they fit. 
And then finally, you get, again, uh, Voltaire just <laughs> dominates and there's, there's no way around it. Uh, and so the, these combinations, we can think about, uh, you can't be an authority and an observer, that's impossible. You can be an authority and a mediator, which we'll call a broad broadcaster. You can be an observer and a mediator, which we'll call a synthesizer. Or you can be all three, in which you're we're glibly calling influencer. And for the moment, it's only Voltaire. <laughs> uh, but we hope uh, to move forward uh, thinking of other metrics, other clusters, other ways of, uh, of looking through this. And again, we, we have to run the entire corpora uh, against the, this reuse. This is just a small one now. We think Voltaire will still be in the center of it, but we hope that other people will come along to it. And then we want to uh, gradually uh, enrich our metadata uh, and extend out to different, different taxonomies of reuse. And so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there, and thank you very much.